country in the world has an ambition, has an ambition in digital. And every self-respecting and uh, serious institution in the world has an ambition uh, for going digital. The thought that I want to leave with you is this collaboration between state and free enterprise. In Southeast Asia, a lot of regulators uh, think that they need to take, their, uh, take a cue or, take, or learn something from uh, what Singapore is doing. And Singapore seems to set the tone uh, for the regulatory framework that is being built uh, in many of the different countries in this region. But as I travel around the world, I've simplified the idea of what a state can do and what free enterprise can do and what that relationship should look like. And actually, although I come from Singapore, um, I, I make this assertion about Singapore which is unique to itself. There is no other country like Singapore in the world where the state is the most competent authority. Uh, and that's an accident of history. In 1965, when Lee Kuan Yew was putting the country together, he was very lucky to be able to get some of the best brains to work for the state instead of free enterprise. And so when you look at Singapore, you're looking at state-owned enterprises like Singapore Airlines, like uh, the Port of Singapore Authority, uh, some of the corporations, they are state-owned enterprises. And this ability has not been able to be replicated in many countries around the world. In fact, that's like put Singapore right at the top. Uh, maybe Switzerland is a similar country of, of, of that nature, where the state is highly competent. And this chart, shows that where the state is competent, the free enterprise doesn't have a role. So when you're looking at a Singapore, the state builds a lot of the infrastructure. And in a digital future, there is a number of important infrastructures, uh, such as um, the, uh, the communal common space, uh, digital identity, um, and, uh, and ecosystems uh, that need to be played. Then when you go down that chart to the other side, you find countries where the state depends on free enterprise to create it for that country. And so the more left you go on this chart, uh, the, the more the free enterprise actually defines that rule. So you take a country like India, which introduced ADHA, the identity program, uh, that's a very interesting country where free enterprise was actually more competent than the state, but it had to arrive at a point where um, there was actually a gentleman called uh, Nandan, who was the uh, co-founder of Infosys, who was from free enterprise, who, pro who suggested the program to the state and did it almost for free uh, to put in place the infrastructure required for national identity program, which then became the bedrock for the payment infrastructure that India has today. And then when you take countries like Japan or Germany after World War II, the state wasn't able to, um, you know, to create all of the infrastructure very quickly. So they depended a lot on the free enterprise, everything from Siemens to Mitsubishi and so on, to, to build that infrastructure for them. And um, you know, if you go further down, today a country like Bangladesh uh, is a very progressive country because of the role of free enterprise uh, in, instead of the state. And so Brunei has to figure out where on this continuum, this relationship between free enterprise and the state has to be in order to build a digital infrastructure for the country going forward. And I would suggest that a collaboration between the state and free enterprise is the way to go uh, in order that um, Brunei builds an infrastructure that is world-class uh, and not just um, doing things uh, in order to put the structure in place. Uh, and I do believe that BIBD uh, is a world-class institution that is able to uh, help the state in making that transition. And I'm not saying this as a plug for BIBD, I'm saying this because of um, what I've seen so far in what needs to be done to create a world-class institution. Thank you.